Okay, so in this lesson, we're going to, uh, and this is a review, so uh, we're going to be looking at zeros of quadratic functions. Now, again, this is a review of a previous lesson. So let's look at that, that first example. So this is example number one. So example number one, let's find the zeros of this, this quadratic function. And so all of our examples will be quadratic in this particular case, and this is going to lead us to some other ideas in terms of zeros of polynomial functions. So remember, a quadratic function is a polynomial function. Okay, so remember this. Remember that, that to find the zeros of a quadratic function means to determine what values of x makes f of x equal to zero. So remember, this means, this means find the values of x, values of x for which f of x is equal to zero. Okay, so that's what that means. Find the values of x for which f of x is equal to zero. And so if you set this, then then according to this, I got to set this function equal to zero. All right, and so so then I get x squared plus x minus twelve is equal to zero. And then you just solve this quadratic equation. Now, all of our examples in here will be factorable. So uh, remember, one of the things you also used was the quadratic formula. But I want to go ahead and use factoring here because that's, the, that's in, at some point, we're going to use, also remind ourselves about the factor theorem. All right, so I, want to, I just want to use uh, factoring here. So if I factor this, I'm going to get x, let's see, that's going to be plus 4 x minus 3. All right, so, so this particular this particular quadratic function can be factored as x plus 4 times x minus 3. And then remember when we use a zero factor theorem, we said each of those equal to 0 because that product is 0. So we said x plus 4 equals 0, x minus 3 equals 0, and we solve for x. So x would be negative 4 and x would be 3. And those are your solutions to this, to this equation. Which means, which means that those are zeros to this to this quadratic function. All right, so so these are our solutions to this equation, okay? Which also means that those are zeros to this quadratic function. So the zeros, so the zeros of f of x are um, x equal negative four and x equal three, okay? All right, so that's what we mean by zeros. All right, now let's look at this. All right, so let's look at example two. So example two says find the zeros, and notice I use both plurals for zero. So um, it's, uh, zero in terms of plurals can be with or without the e. So find the zeros of g of x this time, which is 2x squared plus 2x minus 24. So again, just like before, remember what this means. So this means that the values of, of x, so this means, so if, you were, if you're trying to find the zeros of this function, so this means find the values, find the values of x for which, for which um, g of x is equal to zero. Okay? So, so if you're going to find the zeros, then you're going to set this function equal to zero. So we get 2x squared plus 2x minus 24 equals zero. Now, remember when you solve quadratic equations, one of the things that helps if, is if you would factor out the GCF. So if I factor out the GCF, which is 2 in this case, I want to show you what's going to happen. I get 2 times x squared plus x minus, oops, minus 12, right? Well, you see this part here? Isn't that part the same as this part here? So notice x squared plus x minus 12, x squared plus x minus 12. So if I factor, if I factor this right here, this trinomial, I get x plus 4 times x minus 3 is equal to 0. And so notice that this, this function you has three factors, 2, x plus 4, x minus 3. These right here are the only two factors that will produce any zeros because those are the two factors that contain variables. So I just set each of those equal to zero, just like I did before. And so I get x to be negative 4 
and x to be 3. So I want you to notice that, that even though g of x and f of x are two totally different functions, they have the same zeros. They have the same zeros. Okay? And that's going to be important in, in one of the next sections. So, so it is, it is feasibly, feasibly fine to have two different functions with the same zeros. Now, what that means in terms of the graph, just to remind you, is this. So, so this blue graph that you see here, this blue graph, let me go ahead and make it larger. It looks black on, on the screen, I guess. But the blue graph is, is f of x. So notice the vertex is right here, and notice the x-intercepts, the zeros, are the same thing as the x-intercepts, so 3 and negative 4. The red graph that you see here is g of x. So this is g of x. So the red graph is g of x. So notice that the vertex is different than this one, okay? But they still have the same x-intercepts. So one of the things that we learned in a previous lesson was that the x-intercepts and the zeros are the same thing. X-intercepts and zeros are the same values, okay? All right, so, so notice that these two are different functions. G of x, g of x, and f of x are two totally different functions. You can see that from the graph. They're different graphs, but they have the same zeros. These right here, remember, and let me go ahead and, and write it like this. So these x-intercepts right here are the same thing. These x-intercepts, remember, are the same thing as your, your zeros. Same thing as the zeros. Okay? All right. So that was example two. So one of the things I wanted you to understand in those two examples, in those two examples, is that, is that the... The, these two functions, even though they're different functions, see f of x is different than g of x. Even though they're different functions, they have the same zeros. And notice all they differ by is this number out here. So this was a 3. I'd have another different function with the same zeros, wouldn't I? If this was 1 half, I'd have another different function with the same zeros. Okay, the graphs would look totally different, but it would cross, they would cross the x-axis at the same place. Okay? Alright, so that was example two. Okay, so let's go ahead and do one more, and this should and this should help us for the next lesson next lesson. Alright, so find the zeros of this function. H of x is equal to 3x squared minus 8x plus 2. So we have this quadratic function. And so if I'm going to find the zeros, remember then to find the zeros means to find the value of x. So this means find the values of x for which h of x is equal to 0. So in other words, all i got to do is set this, this equation or this function equal to 0. So I get 3x squared minus 8x plus 2 equal zero. And then we're going to factor. And so when I factor, I'm going to get 3x, x, um, and let's see, the last sign's positive, so these signs have to both be negative because of the middle sign. And I think what's going to work is that this needs to be a 1 and this needs to be a 2. And let's see, yep, that works because the outer is a negative 6x, the inner, oops, that does not work. All right, so let's, let's, uh, um, let's try this. Okay, let's change this to 7x make it, to make it work. Alright, so 7x. Alright, and now that should work. So I just changed this to 7x. Okay, so 3x uh, times a negative 2 is a negative 6x, and a negative 1x is negative 7x. Alright, so there we go. Okay, so then I'm going to say each of these equal to 0. So I get 3x minus 1 equals 0, x minus 2 equals 0. And so um, here I get 3x equal 1, so x is 1 third. So there's one of my zeros. And over here, the other zero is 2. All right, so the zeros, so the zeros of h of x, which equals 3x squared minus 7x plus 2, are, are x equal 1 third and x equal 2. Okay?
All right. Now, uh, so so that so this this review should help for the next lesson. And what's going to happen in the next lesson is this: you're going to be given zeros, and you're going to be asked to come up with the quadratic function or the cubic function, whatever function it may be. But basically, you'd be, you're going to be asked to come up with the polynomial function. All right, so we're going to work backwards in the next lesson.